share our live stream just so that we can reach any of those that might not be with us today. That would be great. And I just want to take a minute and start off by saying, I think the last couple of weeks, we could all agree, have been rather heavy. Between the loss of a young life in our community and the attacks on Israel this week, Father Lord, there has been just so much happened just since we were seated in this place last week. And so I just pray, um, I just wanted to say, it's easy to get caught up in that. And if we try to understand it all, we can slip into worry and anxiety so easily. But I seen a post this week that said, <clears throat> you weren't meant to carry all the burdens of the world. Christ has told us his yoke is light, so find rest in him. And that's good. That's good. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Worry is not worship, friends. And God pursues us, and he wants us to depend on him. So let's not try to carry a load that wasn't ours to carry in the first place. So whatever you brought in here this week, whatever's weighing you down, I think many of us could agree that the attacks on Israel, they're rather scary. Let's give it to the Lord. Let's practice true worship. So let's pray. Father Lord, we thank you. We thank you for bringing us together again this week, Father Lord. And we just pray. We pray that you'll change lives in this place, Father Lord, as you see fit. We pray that you bless this service from the beginning to the end, Heavenly Father Lord. And we want to thank you for the freedom. The freedom to come together and worship, Father. So we just thank you, and in Jesus' name, amen. Oh, 
can't hold back my pain. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my pain. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my pain. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my pain. I gotta let it out.
hope and there is freedom in this place. I speak to Jesus. In your name, your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name
God, we thank you for the opportunity to come here and to get to experience what you're doing in this place. We thank you that in the name of Jesus, everything of the enemy has to go and it has no place here. We thank you for that this morning, Jesus. We glorify you this morning, Jesus, because you are worthy of every song, every breath, every praise we have to offer. And so, God, we ask that you would just move throughout the rest of this service, open our hearts and our minds to receive what you have for us. We pray all of this in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the Lord's presence. It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Uh, if this is your first time worshiping with us, we say welcome to you. Uh, hopefully you were given a Connect card when you came in. If not, if you'd just be so kind to stop by the Welcome Center, pick one of those up, fill it out. Drop it back off to them, and they'll give you a voucher for a free gift and a free coffee at the coffee bar. Just our token of appreciation and our way of saying thank you for choosing to worship with us today. So can we give any first-time guests, some returning guests, which I see this morning, and those joining us for Online Church, a great big Freedom Point welcome. Come on, let's celebrate them. Let them know we're glad to have them today. And um, I want to do something else uh, this morning also. Um, in the past month, of course, as you know, uh, our church has has really been growing and we thank the Lord for that and with that growth uh, it, it causes the, the need for uh, additional help and additional staff and we have recently taken on two uh, new staff members first of all uh, assuming the role of uh, Karen Collins who has been our finance officer for 10 years um, Karen uh, tells us she is retiring this time we've talked about it about three times but she says this time she is and so we have hired, uh, Rhonda, if you don't care, Trevor, get the lights for us. And Rhonda, if you don't care, stand up. We've hired Rhonda Reynolds as our new finance officer here. So we appreciate Rhonda. And with, uh, and you can leave those on for just one second, Trev. And with uh, all of the other growth, as you know, our student ministries is uh, astronomically growing as well. And that's awesome. Uh, and Nicholas is our worship pastor and our middle school pastor. Uh, and our worship ministry is our worship ministry not doing a wonderful job. Amen. Nicholas is on vacation this morning, and uh, he is like me. He, he just loves the fact that worship can be great, and he doesn't have to be here. Uh, but in order to make all that happen, we have also uh, hired someone else part-time to help him. Uh, and your new worship leader, uh, with the title of worship leader here at the church, is Miss Abigail Fox. So, uh, and we appreciate her. She has been putting the team together and practicing with them whenever uh, Nicholas wasn't here for a while now. Uh, and uh, so she'll be assuming some greater roles and responsibilities as well. So uh, I did want to, um, to announce that, make you aware of that. Rhonda actually started the end of September, I believe, and Abby started this month. So uh, we just welcome both of them to our staff and, and uh, we appreciate them and, and what they're going to add and contribute to what the Lord's doing here. So if you have not connected yet electronically, you can do so by scanning the QR code uh, that is up on the screen. That'll take you to all of our online connection platforms. You can also pick up a Stay Connected card out at the Welcome Center. That'll give you the QR codes for all the different People Connect groups. This is Connection Weekend, so uh, the Wave, which is your young adult group, and the River, which is your middle-aged uh, parents and singles, those two groups met yesterday uh, for fellowship. And then today, uh, the Cove, which is young parents and young families, uh, the Cove is meeting out at Red Roof Farm for uh, a hayride and all kinds of fall activities out there and food. So that's taking place this afternoon. And then uh, immediately after... Um, 50, I think it's 55 and over or whatever our senior ministry is, 50 and over, 55 and over, whatever. If you feel like you're a senior, uh, then you know what the day and age we're living in, if you identify as a senior, today there's a potluck after the service. So some of y'all are like, oh, I identify. Praise God. Uh, there's a potluck after service um, in the fellowship hall for the well. That's our senior adult group. So be sure and pick up a Stay Connected card so you can connect to those people groups. They would love to have you join their activities today. Um, if you have not already. And um, is anybody hot? I see some people fanning, so could I get some guys to check and say, I know we had heat at 845. We might need some AC for this service, so we appreciate that. But be sure, stay connected, become a part of these uh, connect groups, and it'll be a blessing to you. Also, ladies, tomorrow night is uh, night six or week six of the Find Your People 
uh, Bible study. They would love to have you. We've been having a, a wonderful turnout of ladies every Monday night at 6.30. They'd love to have you join them tomorrow. Also, today is the last day for the Candleberry Fundraiser. This is for NPK and ESM. It's one of the largest fundraising events they do each year. It helps fund uh, a large portion of their ministry back there, believe it or not, because the profit from these is so very good. If you use Candleberry candles, you know they cost you 20 some odd dollars to purchase a large one and around 20 to purchase a small one. Uh, you can purchase a small one for 18 from them and a large one for 28 and they get a huge percentage of the profits into MPK ESM ministry. So if you haven't already done this, today's the last day. I want to ask you, find an MPK or ESM student, volunteer, or parent and you can place an order with them today uh, and it will definitely help their budgets. Also coming up the last Wednesday night of this month, one of our largest community outreach events of the year is our annual trunk or treat. We're expecting about a thousand trunk or treaters that will come through on that night down on the lower level parking lot. Uh, we have upped it because of what we're anticipating. We've upped it that we want at least 50 trunks. We've got right at 40 that have signed up. So if you are willing to decorate a trunk and give out candy from your trunk, if you would please scan this QR code and register. Uh, Miss Kayla uh, wants to make contact with you and give you the details on that. It's uh, the last Wednesday night of this month, October 25th from 7 to 8 p.m. But let's say maybe you can't get here in time to do a trunk or for whatever reason, you're not going to do a trunk, but you want to help. From today until the 25th, you can bring uh, bags of candy that you want to donate to the church. The church will have an information booth that will give out information and candy as well. But we also want to have a good supply of candy to help those of you that are doing trunks out. If you start to run out, we want to be able to give you uh, something to replenish. So anybody that will purchase some extra candy, drop it off at the Welcome Center anytime, Wednesday night or Sundays, between now and October 25th. We would greatly appreciate the help with the candy. Also, guys, we're going to be having a men's tailgate party here in the lobby of the church on Saturday, October the 28th. Um, and the time will, is to be announced when we figure out the time and what the time is going to be of the UK-Tennessee game. I don't even want to talk about how that might go after last night. We don't want to talk about that, do we? Uh, but anyway, we'll have a good time regardless. Uh, maybe we'll eat and uh, turn our heads and do something else while the game's going on. But anyway, it's going to be a great time of men's fellowship. If you want more information about that, if you'll see Richie Baxter, we will get the time announced as soon as the, the game time is announced. Uh, but we do ask that you bring um, your favorite uh, uh, tailgate food and a two-liter drink. Um, and wear your game day best. It's going to be a great time together. We're going to play some cornhole and different things, and we're going to meet in the lobby of the church uh, on that Saturday. So don't forget that. Also, if you are not currently serving somewhere and you would be willing, I don't know if you realize it or not, but our MPK and ESM ministries that are meeting in the back this morning, you see what the sanctuary looks like. A couple, a couple Sundays ago in ESM alone, which is first through fifth grade, they had 65 children not counting workers. So they have in the past always divided up into two groups after worship and they're needing some help particularly in ESM so that they can divide up into three groups. So if you're not serving anywhere and you would be willing to serve one Sunday a month in ESM ministry, if you would see Miss Kayla, she would love to have you become a part of that. Uh, or is the serve link still working, Trevor, on the website? No, it is not, but we'll get, we'll get something up for that so that you can register that way as well. Uh, but, but if you'll see Miss Kayla or any ESM volunteer, they can pass your information along to her and she'll reach out to you. She would love to have your help. We're going to worship the Lord in our giving this morning, and we are continuing in the month of October focusing on some special missions. You may or may not be aware, but right here in Corbin, uh, we have a uh, lady minister, uh, Lori Crawford, who is an ordained minister in the Nazarene Church. The Lord gave her a vision, her and her husband Scott, Crawford uh, began what is known in Corbin as Hope Place. Hope Place um, is, um, you might think, similar maybe to Celebrate Recovery, but it's so much more. Uh, they are feeding them, worshiping with them on a weekly basis, but they now have, uh, Hope Place has its first sober living house that can accommodate, I believe, um, around 12 men or so in the same house right here in Corbin that has been renovated. Uh, and they, it is an active sober living house. This morning as we speak, those men are in church at the Nazarene Church in Corbin. It is a wonderful mission that has been started and the Lord laid it on my heart. We have supported them in the past, but not regularly out of our missions budget. 
and the Lord laid it on my heart to include them as we're doing missions giving this month. So if you've not heard about Hope Place, it's a phenomenal ministry. Darla's sister, Christina, is also an ordained minister in the Nazarene Church, and she has came down and helped work and get Hope, Hope Place ready and worked in that ministry as well. So to find out just a little bit more, we've got a short video for you this morning. If you'll direct your attentions to the screen, Lori Crawford's going to share with us about Hope Place. We opened Hope Place two years ago, and we are just so excited about what God is doing there. Um, we started going into a drug rehab, and from there, we've built relationships with those guys. Every Sunday, we have 8 to 12 guys in Sunday school with us. Um, we have service in the rehab once a month, and then once a month, we drive a van, and we get the guys and bring them to our big Hope Place service that we have outside. Um, our main purpose is just kind of bridging the gap. Sometimes people feel intimidated to come into the church, and we just want people to know that we're ordinary people serving this perfect God, and that we can make it, we can do this, and together we can be the community of God that He wants us to be. Um, we opened in June um, a sober living home, our first one we're calling it, because we are believing God that we're going to, that we're going to be able to do more. And so it's faith-based. About six weeks ago, we started um, having house church there on Sunday nights. And that has just been a beautiful thing for me to be able to share the gospel with guys who just have no background at all. Just just at the, at the basics, you know, Christianity 101. And, and the second service, I just, just got teary-eyed and, and just wanted to cry because I thought, what a privilege. You know what a privilege to serve our God in this way and uh, so far we've baptized eight guys and one girl and uh, recently one of our guys feels called into the ministry so we are just excited excited about what God's doing thank you for supporting us all right that's awesome that's awesome, and I want us to be uh, a part of that. So when you give into missions giving today, maybe you watch that and you feel led, you want to make sure yours goes specifically to Hope Place. That's fine as well. If you want to notate that, we'll make sure it goes specifically to them. Uh, otherwise, we're going to be taking our overall missions budget after our missions giving is in for this um, last half of the year. We're going to be taking that budget and dividing it uh, amongst the different missions that I've shared with you that we supported. We'll have one more next week, and that's the last one uh, that I will share with you. So I want to ask you as you give this morning, sow something uh, into Hope Place. Maybe you can't give a lot, but maybe you can give $10. Sow something into that this morning. It's awesome. Listen, if we're honest with ourselves, we probably could use many more sober living houses in the city of Corbin. Could we not? If we're honest. So let's support uh, the one that's there. And I know that God's given them a vision. If they garner enough support, you'll see other sober living houses start to pop up. Uh, and so I, I'm just thankful for that. So as you're uh, giving today, you can scan the QR code. You can use the Secure Give app. You can drop it in the receptacle in the lobby. You can swap a card at the kiosk. You can put it in missions, and it'll go to the general missions budget. But if you want to put a note in other for Hope Place, we'll make sure it goes specifically to Hope Place. If you're watching online, there's a link on your screen how you can participate in the giving, or you can mail it to P.O. Box 1173 Corbin. We're going to ask the Lord's blessing over your tithe today and then this special missions offering. And we'll get into the word. Father, we thank you today for your presence that we felt here already in such a wonderful way. Lord, we just thank you today for Hope Place and the work that they are doing in the city of Corbin. I pray blessing over Lori and Scott Crawford uh, and this ministry. And Lord, I pray today that as we sow into that, I pray that you would bless it and multiply it. Uh, I know, Father, that they will do, as well as these other missionaries that we're supporting, they will do the same thing that we do here, and that's uh, ensure that the, the money, the funds are used for the upbuilding of your kingdom and nothing else. And Lord, today we, we trust them with that. We trust you to bless it so that they can do that. And we ask you, Father, as always, if there's somebody under the sound of my voice that wants to give and maybe they don't have anything at all they can give today. Lord, I pray especially for them that you would bless them this week, place it in their hands that they can return to your house and worship you with a portion of what you bless them with. We'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in advance. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said... Amen. We're going to give you one minute to give this morning. We'll get into the Word.
stand with me all over the room this morning. We're going to be in the book of Matthew, chapter 25. I'm going to be reading uh, 13 verses out of this chapter. I don't usually read that much, but this tells the, takes that to tell the entire story this morning. Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. The Word said, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. <clears throat> but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. I want to preach to you for a few moments this morning a message uh, the Lord has given me and a sense of urgency that I feel today to share a message with you. I've just simply titled, Ready or Not. If you will, pray with me and for me. Father, once again, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your word. Lord, I pray today that uh, you would remove every hindrance and every distraction that would prohibit uh, us from hearing what you would speak to us today. Lord, I pray that you would anoint every ear to hear and every heart to receive uh, the cry that will go out to your people today. And Lord, also to those that are uh, not yet believers, I pray that they will hear that cry this morning as well. I pray, Lord, that we would all have the same sense of urgency when we leave this place, Lord, today, that we don't have a lot of time. And that we need to get the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ to as many people as we can. I pray that sense of urgency would fall on this house today. In the name of Jesus, I pray you would anoint these lips of clay to deliver your word today. And that your word would come forth in the power and the demonstration of your spirit. And God, ultimately, we give you the praise for what you're going to do in and through your word today in advance. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated today. When I was a child, I remember one of my favorite things was to uh, gather with the rest of our family, a lot of our family at my granny's house. And my granny had a small house, and so when we would all gather together, uh, all of the adults would be inside, and if the weather was pretty, all the kids would be outside. How many members those times? And uh, one of my favorite things to do when I was with all of my cousins at my granny's house at a family get-together, especially in the summer, was to play hide-and-go-seek. And when we would play hide-and-seek, you know the game. Somebody would count while they were covering their eyes, or those of us that cheated, they were looking through their fingers. But we would cover our eyes, and somebody would count to 10 or 20 or 30 or whatever we decided. And then they would remove their hands from their face, and they would shout, Ready or not, here I come. And I remember how exciting that was. And once I was hid... And I was just sure they wasn't going to find me this time. I couldn't wait to hear those words, ready or not, here I come. But that also meant whether you had found your hiding place or not. And when you got 30 cousins in the yard, uh, everybody couldn't find a place to get. And there would be always, there'd be somebody scurrying, looking for a place to go when the, when the crowd went out for ready or not. But that meant whether you were in your spot or not yet, ready or not meant I'm coming anyway. I'm coming regardless. And listen, I want to tell you this morning, the Lord has stirred me this week. My greatest responsibility as a minister, and more importantly as a pastor, is to hear 
what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and to faithfully and to the best of my ability correctly interpret that message and then it's my responsibility to boldly declare it to you whether it's popular or not. Whether it's comfortable or not. And i got a feeling it might get a little uncomfortable today. Whether it encourages and builds up, which is what is always 99% of the time my goal when I sit down to prepare a message, or whether it rebukes and reproves. It's my responsibility. And there are many messages that I could share with you today, and any one of them could encourage you in your faith and in your walk with the Lord. But I also must speak what I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying to me. I must communicate what God has put in my spirit this week. And, and with, there's, a, there's a sense of urgency to this message. I talked about it when I prayed. And just like Noah, who was building the ark, remember, to save his family and to repopulate the earth, sometimes being a minister feels like standing at the door of the ark and sounding the warning, knowing that any minute the door of grace could be coming to a close. Are you with me this morning? And Noah must have shouted, he must have pleaded, he must have begged and said, please come into the ark. I've got the door open. Please come in. I've done all the work. I've already built the ark. All you have to do is get inside to be safe. And that's what I feel like the Lord is saying today. He's saying, I've already done all the work. I've already, the rain's coming. The storm is on the way. I've already built the ark by way of my cross. Are you with me this morning? The blood that I shed has already opened the door of grace. And you don't have to be lost. You may not be ready this morning, but I've got news for you. You might have walked in here lost, but you don't have to leave that way. Noah preached and he pleaded, the flood is coming. Judgment is coming. And today, the urgency of the Holy Spirit is upon us. And he's saying this morning, ready or not, I am coming again. And you, listen, you may not believe it. You may ridicule it. You may laugh it off. Some may criticize it. Some may even believe that He is coming again, but it's not going to be for a while, maybe 20 or 30 years, or maybe even another 100 years from now. Uh, I've heard people say, you know, I've heard it preached, the Lord's coming back. I've heard that all my life, and He ain't come back yet. Guess what? That doesn't mean He ain't coming back. He's still coming back. And I remember when I was growing up, some of y'all will relate to this this morning and help me preach if you would. I remember when I was growing up, we rarely ever left a service that we didn't hear Jesus is coming. I thought about some things this week and I really got stirred and I began to reminisce and think about some things. In the old church, we, and I'm not criticizing what we sing now, so don't misinterpret that. But in the old church, we sung songs about it even. How many remembers? Jesus is coming soon, morning or night. Anybody know that? Sing it. Many will meet. Trumpets will sound. We used to sing about it. We used to sing another song. We used to sing soon and very soon. You know what? Sing it. We are going to see. Come on, sing it out. Soon and very soon. We are going. You know what? When we would sing that, we believed it. I'm going somewhere this morning if you'll stay with me. We believed it when we would sing it. And then I, I was reminded this week that every preacher, when I was growing up, that would take the pulpit, would remind us, Jesus is coming soon. At the end of the service, Jesus is coming soon. Sometimes tongues and interpretation would often confirm it in a service that Jesus is coming soon. You know why? It's because we lived with a sense of urgency of the hour. We were constantly reminded that these are the last days. And I don't know about you, but I'll be transparent as I always am this morning. I lived with a fear of missing the rapture. Anybody else with me? 
I was afraid when I'd mess up. I got to pray quick because any moment the Lord could come back and I wouldn't get to go. Right? I lived with a fear. It was that real to me. The thought of that becoming a reality was enough of a scare tactic, even if you will, to cause some of us to live right. I remember the story, and I probably won't tell it right, uh, but my father-in-law, Rick, uh, when he was growing up, he lived with his mother and his grandma. Him and his brothers lived with his mom and his grandma. His grandmother, Angie's great-grandmother, was the founder of, uh, of a, a very strong, even in our community today, Pentecostal church, Dorothy Pentecostal church. She was the founder of that church, a wonderful lady. And she was also one of these ladies that, I know another one here like her, that always took her purse everywhere she went. Hello, somebody. Wouldn't let go of the purse. In case y'all didn't know, a couple Wednesday, a few Wednesdays ago, Sister Diane Miracle down here was leaving church on a Wednesday night going down the sidewalk and she started to fall. Probably if she'd let go of the purse, she wouldn't have broke the arm. But by George, she wasn't letting go of that purse. So, but we're thankful that Diane's had her surgery and she's doing better. Next time Diane let go of the purse. But Angie's mamma took her purse everywhere she went. She never went anywhere without her purse. And Rick came home one day when he wasn't living just right. And he went through the house not expecting mom or mamma to be gone. And he said, mom, nobody answered. Mamma, nobody answered. He went on through the house looking and he couldn't find anybody. He come back to the kitchen and on the table was mamma's purse. He said, oh my Lord, I've missed the rapture. And he got on the phone and he began to call to see who was still left here. The first person he called was his aunt, Captola Sulfridge. So he knew when Cap answered the phone, he was safe. He was like, Phew. I thought for sure I'd miss the rapture. But you know what? I know that's funny, but I said all that to say this. I remember a time when we taught our children to live with a sense of urgency that Jesus was coming soon. But some way, somehow, something happened. Down through the years, the church fell into a slumber. The church began to cozy up with the world. The church began to fall in love with the pleasures of this world, and while doing so, she fell out of love with Jesus. Will somebody help me preach this morning? The church began to do, and I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about the church. I'm not talking about this denomination. I'm talking about all denominations. The church began to do what the old song said to do. Another old one that we used to sing was, I don't want to get adjusted to this world. Anybody remember that song? The church began to get adjusted to the world. And the church got comfortable with the world. And all of a sudden, somewhere down the line, the church stopped saying, singing about heaven and then the church stopped preaching about hell and then very rarely do we ever hear a message that Jesus is coming soon and some way somehow the whole overall picture of church became more about being happy than it was being holy it became more about being comfortable than it was about being converted. And for many that do what I do, it became more about building our kingdom instead of His kingdom. And just like the ten virgins that I read about to you this morning, I'm afraid much of the church world is asleep. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 5 from our main text said, but while the bridegroom was delayed, they all, say all, slumbered and slept. The ones who had the oil and the ones who didn't. They all fell asleep and began to slumber. And it's a fact that the church in general has been asleep. The church has long been referred to as the sleeping giant. Because the devil knows what the church is capable of when she's awake. When she's awake, she's a threat to hell. When she's awake, chains 
get broken and bondages get set free. When she's awake, lives get transformed. But while she's sleeping, she's become a laughing stock, a mockery. She's become a source of criticism and humiliation. Time and time again, the scriptures have exhorted us to be watchful, to be alert. To not fall into a spirit of slumber. To not let the spirit of this world lull us into sleep and into a false sense of security. Can I tell you the church world is full of a false sense of security today. Why is this point so important, Pastor? It's because a church that is asleep is powerless. A church that's asleep is without influence in the community or in the world. And a church that is asleep, nobody's probably going to help me preach here, but a church that is asleep will become tolerant and accepting to everything. The Word said they all slumbered and slept. And I know there's always been some faithful watchmen on the wall. One of my favorites that I've always followed and read and listened to his preaching until he even went on to heaven and now I still listen to archives of his preaching and that's David Wilkerson. Times Square Church. He's always been like a watchman on the wall and there are others. I know there have been watchmen on the wall who have never fallen into the spirit of slumber who have remained spiritually awake and alert but for the most part the church as we know it has been asleep. One of the greatest indications that a church is asleep is that they have no sense of urgency about Jesus' return. In fact, the Bible says that in the last days, they would even begin to mock and say, where is the promise of His coming? Everything's the same as it, all, as it always has been. Nothing's ever changed. Every day is the same. Go ahead, eat, drink, and be merry. Live however you want. Right, young people? I'm just living my life. Live however you want, and all that's going to happen is you're going to die, and that's the end, and nothing else will happen. That's the biggest lie the devil has ever wanted you to buy into. And God points out that he also warned in his word of a coming flood. And it was a flood of judgment upon the world. And that even though they doubted and they mocked and they ridiculed Noah, the flood still came just like God said it would. And when it came, it washed them all away. Many times throughout Scripture, we are instructed to keep the soon coming of Jesus in our thoughts and in our hearts and to live every day in the urgency that He could come again at any minute. Just like that. And we don't know when, but we do know He's coming back. Somebody say amen. Matthew 24 and verse 36 said, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven know, but my Father only. We don't know when, but we know He gave us signs to be looking for. He gave us signs to be looking for. Do you know what the greatest need in the church today is. I prayed and even repented this week because I've even said and prayed and cried and told God the greatest need that we had was revival. And we do need revival. Somebody say amen. But even greater than revival, the greatest need that the church has today is a sense of urgency. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, a sense of urgency will fix a lot of the problems that the church has today. If we truly lived with a sense of urgency and people were seriously concerned that if Jesus came back, they may not go, we wouldn't be arguing over isms and schisms and little things that divide. We'd all be doing everything we can to live as holy as we can. The greatest need the church has is the need for the sense of urgency to return to the church. We don't know when he's coming, but he gave us signs to be looking for. 
Has anybody watched the news lately? Marissa talked about it some when she opened up. Have you been keeping up with the current situation in Israel? You've been watching about that. If that situation, folks, doesn't cause you to have a sense of urgency, I'm not really sure what will. That situation should cause you to have a sense of urgency. The scripture already talked about it and told us what to do in Luke chapter 21, verse 25. And there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and in the stars. And on the earth, watch this, distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Watch this. Then... Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, watch what he said. When those things begin to happen, look up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And folks, there are some things that the Scriptures are conditional and relational about. That means that Whether they happen or not depends on our attitude and our actions. But this one thing that I just read about to you this morning, it's one thing that God, only God, decides. Guess what? He's not asking for your input. He's not asking for your opinion. It doesn't matter if you agree with this word or not. Oh, I'm about to preach up in here. It doesn't matter if you want to find you a place to feel comfortable where you can live like hell Monday through Saturday and then enjoy the worship on Sunday. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, if the lifestyle doesn't match the Word of God, God is not asking for your input. God's not asking if you like it or not. God's not asking if you agree with it or not. But here's what he's saying when you see those signs. When I give the word, it's going to happen that fast. See, the disciples lived every day of their life with that same sense of urgency. They believed even then that the coming of the Lord was imminent. They watched him leave and when he left, he said, I will come back. And from the moment he got out of their sight, they began watching for his return. They did everything they did with that sense of urgency. And we need that sense of urgency to return to the church today. Because Jesus is coming. And we better get busy. Because time is short. Jesus himself said, Work while it is day, because night's coming when no man can work. Jesus himself said, Behold, I come quickly. Jesus himself said, Occupy till I come. Jesus himself said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You and I, that's why missions giving is so important. Maybe you can't go, but you can fund those who do go. Somebody help me preach this morning. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Jesus himself said, make disciples of all nations. And this urgency filled them with expectancy, and it fueled them to preach. They didn't try to preach what made people happy because they were too worried about people missing heaven and going to hell. Hmm. It gave them, it fueled them to reach as many people as they could before he returned. They didn't live their life, I've told you I'm going to preach to us this morning. They didn't live their life going to church every Sunday because it made them feel better. They lived their life going to church every Sunday to get what they needed so they could go out those doors and find somebody else who didn't have what they had and give them what they need. The Bible said they literally evangelized their known world at that time. And this sense of urgency and expectancy of his imminent return, it kept them diligent, it kept them awake, and something else it kept them was holy. Because see, when the church gets sleepy, the church gets sloppy. 
And she begins to look like the world. She begins to talk like the world. And she begins to act like the world. And in fact, in many cases, you can't tell the difference between the world and the church. Oh, I'm going to need some help right here. I want to tell you something, parents. You don't have to let your children dress like the rest of the world. Oh, you don't know what's in style. Yes, I do. I know what's in style. It's in style for your homecoming dresses, or hoko, as y'all call it these days, to show what your mama gave you that's meant to be saved for your husband. I know it's in style. Wait a minute, you may not clap when I'm done, so let me just finish. I know it's what's in style. But your children, you don't have to feel pressured to dress them like the world. You don't have to feel pressured for them to walk down the football field looking like they're walking down to the street corner to find somebody to hook up with. We used to have a saying when I was growing up, and it's probably not popular today, and you young people will think that I'm irrelevant and old and all that stuff, and I am old. I'm getting old. But we used to have a saying that, you know what we said? Modest is hottest. I like a little something left to the imagination. And some of y'all don't leave a little something something left to anybody's imagination. Modest is hottest, but you know what I'm so thankful for? I watched the homecoming on Friday night. And the most modest, and some of them, some of them were modest. Don't get me wrong. Some were modest. Some were not. There was one in particular. I just sat there and said, Lord, don't let her sit down. Don't let her sit down. I was afraid it wasn't going to cover trying to walk across the field. I'm not kidding you. I mean, if I'm lying, I'm dying. My, my suit jacket is longer. But the one that won homecoming was the most modest dress in a pantsuit. And for those of you that just got mad, you're welcome. But this is what we're seeing today. We're seeing a church that has fallen asleep. And she's laid her head in the lap of the world. And just like Samson, the church has some way, somehow fallen in love with the harlot. The harlot is the spirit of this age. For Samson, it was Delilah. For the church today, it's the spirit of this age. And the Bible has something to say about that. The Bible calls that the apostate church. The Bible calls that the backslidden church. And I, I know what I'm about to say, and I'm going to try. I told the 845 service, I'll tell you all. I'm going to say it as delicately and easily as I can, but here's where it is. The apostate church and the backslidden church is the church that accepts and ordains people who choose lifestyles that are strictly forbidden by God's Word. The church that gambles and drinks alcohol while they're singing and having Bible study. Yeah, some of y'all won't help me with that. The church that says, it's all relative. If it feels right to you, then it's okay for you. Just do it. The church that says the Holy Spirit doesn't convict us of our sins. He just reminds us of how righteous we are because of Jesus. The church that says it doesn't matter what sin you commit or how many times you sin because it's already all covered by the blood anyway. The church that says we're all, this is one of the craziest ones, but it's out there, we're all already saved anyway. It's just that some of us don't know it yet. This is a church that says, and this really happens, there's no such thing as hell. And your heaven's going to be on this earth. This is the church that says, you are your own God. And you decide your own destiny. This is the church that says, there's no such thing as the rapture. And there's no such thing as judgment day. God will not judge. He said, you've heard him talk. He said himself, judge not lest you be judged. God's not going to judge you. There is no judgment. God is a God of love and of mercy and of grace. I got news for you. He is a God of love. 
He is a God of mercy. He is a God of grace. But I also got other news for you. You're a free moral agent. And you've been given the right to choose to accept love. To accept mercy. And to accept grace. And if you don't, I got more news for you. There is coming a judgment day. And it's not going to be a happy day for some. But for those of us that have placed our faith in Jesus Christ, for those of us that have said, I'll stand for the Word when the world's on fire, for those of us that have said, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I will not bow, I will not bend, and I will not burn for the real church. It's going to be a happy day. Woo, I feel the Lord this morning. We used to sing about that too. Oh, happy day. Anybody remember that one? It's going to be a happy day. That's the real church. But back to the apostate church. The backslidden church. The harlot church. Did you know she still holds Sunday services? You know, she still runs big attendances. Every time I get excited about church growth, God gives me a message like this, and I'm afraid I'm running people off right while I preach. She still sings religious songs. She still talks about God. And she still lifts her hands in worship and goes through the motions. I've never seen a time in my life, you know, we used to have to pry people to worship. We really did. Preacher would get up and tell everybody, lift up your hands, so everybody lift up their hands. Nowadays, people are living everything that I'm preaching about. And they're the first ones to lift up their hands. What are you saying? We've gone to sleep. We've become comfortable. And you know what? The apostate church might even speak in tongues. But Jesus said, their hearts are far from me. And they're just vain babblers. Now listen, I knew when I wrote this sermon this week and asked God to let me preach something else. I did. I know that this is not politically correct preaching. But I don't care as long as it's biblically correct preaching. And I'm almost finished. You know me. I've never been one to give you the bad and leave you hanging. I want to give you the good. Thank God there is another church. There's a church that is the remnant seed. There's a church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and she is the bride of Christ. And she believes the Word of God. And there is a church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and guess what? She still teaches holiness. Which, by the way, is not the length of your hair, the length of your skirt, whether or not you wear makeup, grow facial hair, or wear long sleeves all the time. Somebody help me preach. That's not holiness. Holiness is a condition of the heart. The, the remnant church still teaches sanctification. And salvation, you've heard me say it many times, is instantaneous, but sanctification is a process. And she still teaches sanctification, consecration, and she still teaches separation from the world. Come ye out from among the world. She still teaches that the Holy Ghost will convict you of your sins. And that without holiness, without a pure heart, no man sees the Lord. That church still teaches that there is a heaven to gain. And there's also a hell to shun. There's eternal judgment for those who reject the mercy of God and His Son, Jesus Christ. And this remnant church still teaches that sin separates us from God. And that sin is darkness, and darkness and light can't dwell together. That's why I said a minute ago, some of y'all looked at me like, well, is it wrong that they come and lift their hands? No, it's not wrong. They need to worship God. But they're not experiencing the light if the darkness never goes away when they go out those doors. She still teaches that sin is breaking God's law and that the wages of sin is death. And the church of the Lord Jesus Christ still believes and teaches that the coming of the Lord is definite. It is imminent. 
And only those who are covered by the blood and robed in His righteousness will go with Him when He comes. See, Noah lived every day with that sense of urgency. That urgency of impending judgment. Any day the rain could start. I've got to get this boat finished. Any day. He worked. He prayed. He preached. He pleaded with urgency and intensity of one who believed that today, this could be the very day. The Happy Goodmans used to sing a song, I believe he's coming back, just like he said. And in that song, it talks about today. This could be the hour, and this could be the day. We don't ever know. They still preach and teach that ready or not, saved or not, in the ark or not, the flood is coming. The storm is coming. The rain is coming. Judgment is coming. But you've got an opportunity to get inside before it's too late. And folks, I truly believe that we are living in such an hour. I do. That God's judgment is at the door. But multitudes of people, even believers, have fallen asleep. But I thank God that He's a God of mercy. I thank God that He's a God of grace. And I thank God that as hard as it is and unpopular as it may be to preach a message like this, He's a God that loves you and I enough that He'll cause preachers all over probably this country this morning to take the pulpit and send out a warning, send out an alarm, send out a wake-up call. Because Matthew chapter 25 and verse 6 in our main text said, And at midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. The cry is going out today. The Holy Spirit is sounding the wake-up call. The alarm is sounding. The trumpet of his love and his mercy is being sounded, I believe, I would not be surprised if it's not being sounded in pulpits all across this nation and this globe today that we need to be looking up. Ready or not, Jesus is coming. And you need to get ready. I believe that that's happening all over the world today. And I don't know if you've paid any attention, but even the newscasters and the scientists, many of which who do not even, uh, they're not even saved, they don't even believe in God, some of them, they all have a sense that something big is about to happen. Anybody ever watch the news? Something big is about to go down. And they're forecasting that things need to, telling people, I've heard some of them telling people you need to take in food supplies and all of these different things. Some of y'all thought that when the FEMA alarm went off that craziness was going to happen. Some of you are laughing, but some of you went out and made sure you had all the food. And had, I mean, I was in the church at 218, and I thought, I wonder if Marissa, in, in my office, I thought, I wonder if Marissa and Rhonda are thinking about that alarm. I guess I'll go talk to him before it goes off. And I stood up and boom, there it went. Went off at 2.18 instead of 2.20. I was like, well, I'll wait till it's finished and go out there and see if they're here. If not, I guess I'm in trouble. But even the world, people that are not saved are realizing there's a sense of urgency. Something big is about to happen. But I have a message to the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The called out ones, the sanctified ones, those of us that have been washed in His blood and clothed in His righteousness, those that have made a covenant with God through the sacrifice of their lives, I want to tell you this morning, you don't have to be afraid. All you got to do is stay awake, keep your eyes open and lift up your heads and look up and watch the eastern sky because any minute He could be coming back just like He said. And as they'll come to the music today, what is going to be the greatest grief and woe and tragedy that has ever hit planet Earth is also going to be the church's finest hour. I said, what's going to be the greatest grief and woe and tragedy that has ever hit this Earth is also going to be the church's finest hour. Luke chapter 12 and verse 40. He said, Therefore you also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. To those of us that are ready, we welcome His return. 
We've been expecting His return. But to those who are not ready, Yes, Jesus. For the thief comes to kill and destroy mm -hmm. and steal. But I have come that you not only have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you will stand with me all over this room, just lift your hands for a moment. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the speaking of your spirit today. We thank you. I sense the spirit of urgency falling all over this house right now. Mm. I want to ask you, unless you absolutely have to, not to be moving in or out. But with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're sitting here this morning and you're willing to be, nobody's looking around, if you're willing to be man or, or woman enough to admit to me and to God, Pastor, I'm not 100% sure that should that trumpet sound before we leave this place today, I'm not 100% sure that I'm ready. If that's you, would you just slip your hand up and put it back down very quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Yes, I see hands all over this room. Anybody else? Church, would you begin to pray? I want to tell you this morning. Oh, hallelujah. I want to tell you, I feel that sense of urgency right now. I want to tell you, you don't have to leave this house today. 
you can know before you walk out those doors that you are ready should you go out into eternity today you are ready to meet him the devil has lied to you long enough and told you that salvation is too difficult being a Christian and being a follower of Jesus Christ is too difficult but the alarm has been sounded the word has gone out today the Lord has spoken to us through tongues and interpretation by his spirit and said it's time for you to awaken to arise and advance the enemy wants you to think those of you that lifted your hands he wants you to think you can't do it because as long as you're asleep you won't do what the Spirit of the Lord just said to do you won't arise and you won't advance but the enemy knows that you if you'll wake up and you'll answer that call you'll be a threat to hell you'll turn things upside down for the Lord Jesus Christ you'll be a warrior advancing for the kingdom the enemy knows that and that's why he has you convinced to sit there but I want to ask you right now with nobody looking around I'm doing this differently than I did at 845 church I want you to pray but there was hands that went up all over this room I want to ask you if you are man or woman enough to lift your hand will you be man or woman enough now to take a step out even if you need to take the hand of the person next to you step out and walk down that aisle and get to this altar right now begin to move right now in the name of Jesus if you lifted your hand would you would you just step out from where you are and find a place in this altar come on thank you yes yes come on don't, don't hold back. Don't worry about who's looking. Nobody's supposed to be looking. If you lifted your hand, would you just step out? And even if you want to take the hand of the person next to you, make your way to this altar. Find your place in this altar today. Huh. Hallelujah. They're coming. Anybody else? Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. Oh, I've got a sense of urgency right now. Listen, you don't know this is not something you want to mess with this morning. You don't know when you'll get your last call or your last warning. I'm telling you before it's everlasting too late. Somebody says, Preacher, you're not supposed to scare people into it. I'm not trying to scare you into it. I'm trying to tell you about something that is a reality. And if you don't, if you don't heed the call, if you don't answer the call, you may not get another opportunity. Step out from where you are right now. Make your place to this altar. I need prayer warriors to begin to move in and begin to pray with these. Talk to them. Ask them what they're praying for. Begin to move in and find somebody and begin to pray with them this morning. Pray them through to whatever they're asking God for today. And while they're coming, anybody else that says, Pastor, i got to come. I feel like this morning there's somebody here that you feel like, preacher, you don't know what you're talking to this morning. You don't know who you're talking to. The Holy Ghost just said something also about addictions. Mm. You don't know who you're talking to. I can come pray, but I can't give up those substances. Church, would you pray? I feel the Spirit of the Lord talking to me right now. I can't give up those substances. That's why I'm not coming, preacher. It's not because I don't believe what you're saying. It's not because I don't believe that God's merciful and He won't save me. I just, I can't get free from these substances. If that's you this morning, I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost. If that's you this morning, the Lord is in this house. And I'm telling you, He will break those chains. He will deliver you if you'll step out from where you are this morning and make your way to this altar. I'm not going to force you to come. I don't even know who you are. But I'm going to beg you. Apostle Paul used to say, I beseech you. I'm going to beg you. Don't leave this place without coming to this altar and calling on Him. And now for the rest of you that are seated here this morning. How many of you in this house will say, Pastor, I feel that sense of urgency and I've got people in my family that need to get right with God. Can I see your hands? I see hands all over this room. We got a lot of space in this altar. They're gonna sing. I wanna ask you, would you, all you gotta do is bring that sense of urgency to God. Pray with urgency and fervency. And God will hear that prayer. Call those names out to God and then ask God to help you. Come on, all over the room. Then ask God to help you, lead you in what to do. 
to lead them to Him. Would you do that this morning? Come lay them on this altar and say, God, I give them to you today. I've got a sense of urgency that they need to be saved before it's too late. Bring them to the foot of the cross. Lay them down and give them to Jesus this morning. As they sing, the altar's open. We're going to pray. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. But just one look at the Savior His life more abundant and free So just look up, your help is on the way Turn, turn your eyes
Jesus in the light of His glory and grace there is freedom healing feel in this place in the light of His glory and grace there is freedom healing Feeling this place in the light of His glory and grace. There's revival and stirring, shaking this place in the light of His glory and grace. There's revival and stirring, shaking. not know if they were ready to meet Jesus should he come back today now know that they are ready to meet Jesus Woo! heaven's doing better than we are right now I said heaven's doing better celebrating them than we are right now we ought to celebrate in this house five people five people said I'm ready now to meet Jesus should he come back today hallelujah I don't even know all five of you personally. I want to get to know you. But I'm so thankful that you made that decision today to step out and accept Jesus. Maybe somebody else made a, a decision today that we don't know about. I want to ask the five of you especially, would you please stop by the Welcome Center, fill out a decision card out there. Let them know what kind of decision you made. And if somebody else made a decision this morning, fill out one of those cards. We're trying our best um, to steward the growth that God has given us to the best of our ability with one-on-one -on -one discipleship, walking hand-in-hand -hand with people as they take their first steps with the Lord. We don't want to be slothful or slumbering in discipling you once you make those decisions. So if you'll please fill out a card out there. Somebody will contact you. Uh, and we just... I'm just so thankful this morning. God always does what we could never do ourselves. Amen. I pray and I want to see it, but it's not every Sunday that we see five. We've seen a lot lately, but that's five today. I thank God for it. I think we ought to celebrate them one more time this morning. Woo! Hallelujah! And I pray more than anything, that you feel, you can give me some lights, Trev, if you don't care. Does anybody feel that sense of urgency that I feel this morning? Do you feel that? This is not just a social gathering that we do a couple times a week, but it's an equipping service. And God is equipping us by His Spirit while we're here. He's equipping us to go out there and do what He's called us to do. I've got people in my family I have a sense of urgency about. I want to see them accept Jesus before He comes back. Because ready or not, 
He is coming. We ought to share that sense of urgency and we ought to leave this place determined that this week, God, give us divine opportunities and divine appointments where we can share the Jesus that we know with those who don't yet know Him. I want to pray and bless you this morning and I'll let you go. Father, we thank you today for your presence. It's been in this place in such a mighty way. Lord, we thank you. We rejoice today as all of heaven rejoices over these five souls that have made decisions, Lord, to serve you. God, I pray that you would help us. Lord, and maybe there was even maybe possibly more, as I've already said. Help us, God, to, to, to do, to foster and to steward, Lord, the kingdom growth that we are experiencing. Help us do what we need to do to walk hand in hand with these. Lord, give us people that are willing to do one-on-one -on -one discipleship with those that are taking their first steps with you. And Father, I pray today that you would give us, as we leave this place, I pray, God, that you would give us divine opportunities and divine appointments whereby this week we can just simply share the love of Jesus that we have been so fortunate to experience. We can share it, God, with those who have not yet experienced you. Lord, we carry that sense of urgency and we bring our loved ones, our lost loved ones, to the foot of the cross. We give them to you and we ask you, God, Lord, to do what we can't do. What we've seen you do this morning, we ask you to do it in their life. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, you would keep us saved. Bless these wonderful people, Lord, that have come out this morning to worship you in your house. I pray, Lord, that you would just bless them this week. Keep them safe until we return on Wednesday night to break the bread of life and study your word together. We just give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for it all. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said... Amen. If you're a senior adult, the well group would love to have you eat with them uh, in the fellowship hall immediately after service. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful day.